coming to you in the middle of the night with some kind of late breaking news. I'm sorry, I'm referring to my notes. Um, on the McNabb Bell case, which is the same case I'm using to launch my podcast, True Crime from the Trailer Hood. Um, okay, so with this case, the breaking news is that Courtney Bell, the um, Court of Appeals, just uh, vacated two of her charges, two of her three charges, or two of her three convictions. Um, they vacated the second degree murder conviction, also vacating the um, second degree cruelty to children conviction. They sustained or kept the um, contributing to the dependency of a minor, which is like a deprivation charge. Unfortunately, well, I guess not a, in my opinion, unfortunately, that charge standing alone still carries the possibility of a uh, of a 10-year prison sentence um, if the state does not appeal the appeals court ruling excuse me then it will be um, set for scheduling with the let's see who was it with the Newton County Superior Court uh, for resentencing but the state does have time to review it and decide if they want to appeal the appeals courts decision to the Supreme Court, to the State Supreme Court, uh, from what I understand, the State Supreme Court. Um, Courtney Bell's only argument was that there was not sufficient evidence to prove that um, that she had anything to do with the crime, and the appeals courts agreed, though the Superior Court, the same one that um, convicted her on all three charges, uh, denied her for her request for a new trial, but the, then she filed a motion with the appeals court, and they agreed. So, that's kind of where that's at. We'll see if the state appeals it. Um, otherwise, she'll be resentenced. Right now, she, with the three um, convictions standing as the way they were, she was sentenced to 30 years to serve 15 of them. Um, based on, I guess, what judge she gets, um, she could still, you know, do 10 years in prison. I'm not, I'm not sure what. I don't, I'm assuming that's the max sentence that's possible. I'm not sure what the, the average, um, sentence and conviction, you know, um, sentence, I don't know what the words I'm looking for are, it's just the middle of the night, but <laughs> I'm not sure what the average, you know, sentence is for her, um, her conviction now that, that stands after the two were vacated, the, um, contributing to the dependency of a minor the deprivation charge but it's definitely something I'm going to look into but um in my opinion this is good because you know Courtney and Chris they're neglectful douchebags but you know neglectful douchebags does not a murderer make so follow this see what happens and this just happened on um on Friday the 18th midday on Friday so it's Saturday the 19th and just found out about it, and then I had to go to justa.com and verify it. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens. I'm curious to see how this plays out with McNabb's trial. Or not trial, I'm sorry, with his motion. Um, I know he put in motion, too, for ineffective counsel, and same thing, um, not enough evidence to prove his convictions or to um, prove sufficient for his convictions. Um, definitely, I feel definitely... He had an effective counsel, so we'll see where that goes. God, his, his lawyer, I mean, it was that guy's first day on the job, not being sarcastic. Like, if somebody was like, no, it really was his first day, I'd be like, shocker, because it no, had to be his first day. Definitely an effective counsel. Um, but I I think this is kind of a, uh, a precursor to what's going to happen with McNabb's motions for a new trial and whatnot. We'll see. See how it goes. So once again, uh, Courtney Bell, second degree murder, second degree cruelty to children charges vacated by the state appeals courts and contributing to the dependency of a minor charge is still, or a conviction is still there. They sustain that. They're going to keep that one. Let's see what happens.